good evening everyone uh, so today uh, is, it is it is it is actually being requested by a lot of faculty members that we must have sessions on scientific writing although uh, everyone is into research but uh, writing a effective research paper which can be easily published in a quality research journal is always an art it's not uh, that everyone uh, can do it in the first go. So learning is very, very important as far as scientific writing is concerned. So, so this is the first session that we are organizing on uh, defining the art of scientific writing. And I think uh, we have the best person uh, today. Uh, we have Dr. Naren Chirmule, who is uh, a renowned uh, scientist. He has been uh, working all across his life in research, publishing absolutely amazingly, amazing research papers. Uh, then he has also uh, experienced corporate world. He was uh, a research head of Biocon, which is the, uh, India's best biotechnology companies. Uh, then he's, he has also founded a company of his own uh, in the name of Symphony uh, Tech. So, so don't think that he's a biotechnologist or biologist and he's only going to talk about biology. But I think uh, some of you who have already uh, means attended his lectures, you, you are absolutely, absolutely uh, understand. You can understand that he's a person who can explain whatever possible things, either biology or non-biology in a very, very simple and effective way to the, to the audience. So that's the main idea why we have uh, invited uh, Narain for this talk. So, so before, uh, without taking much time, <coughs> I would like to invite uh, Narain for his talk. And please uh, be, uh, be write your questions, whatever your questions are, your doubts are, and try to get as much explanation as possible uh, from Narain. So, over to you, Narain, for for your talk. Uh, thank you so much, Sarab. It, it's my pleasure to constantly come back to to Shulini to talk about. Uh, you've given me an opportunity to talk about so many things, and um, thank you very much for that. So, um, as um, as I was saying earlier in this, doing a few Q. That's why I'm asking you which questions to ask. Um, I have been uh, exploring this possibility of how to make writing better. And, and I'll talk I have about 20, 25 slides or so, and then we can do a discussion. Um, so uh, when you write in our universe of writing, what do we write? Uh, we actually write lists every day. Every day we write lists. We write daily lists, weekly lists, monthly lists, grocery lists, guest lists. We don't consider them that as writing, but because list to banare, grocery lana, hai, uh, onion lana, hai, potato lana, hai, likte hai na ek chit pe. that is actually writing, and you have to think to write. You can't just write the grocery list without thinking, right? Then some of you may be writing diaries, some of you may be writing letters. What do you write these on? You, you write on your experiences, what you travel, you write about people, you write about your thoughts. Then a, a little bit larger picture is we, write, we, we some of us may write some stories or we might write some blogs. Um, we might write some observations, some political situation. We might want to write something about it for ourselves, not for anybody else, just for your own self. Finally, you get to scientific writing and, so, and, and social writing and books. You don't start with books immediately. So the, so the circle of writing books is the, is the outermost circle, is the, probably the most difficult circle to fill. Right? You have to start by thinking thoughtfully how to make lists first. Then you can come to writing scientific books. So let's talk about the art of writing. So actually what happened was... Um, when I was in high school in Lucknow, uh, I was not a very studious student and my mother probably realized that in some way. Um, and and she, she asked me to do a me some methodology, which I did grudgingly at that time um, because I did not read well or I didn't, I could, I had, I guess, less attention span or whatever you might call it. Right? So, um, what she told me to do in, in high school, 11th and 12th, or well, 11th May, she said, Padho mat. Sit wo jo textbook hai, physics ki kitab hai, wo notebook mein copy kar do puri. 
वहां जो लिखा है तुम यू जस्ट कॉपी इट इन टू योर नोटबुक पूरी बुक वर्ड फॉर वर्ड चैप्टर ऑन चैप्टर राइट सो थ्रू द कोर्स ऑफ द ईयर by by doing what i the way i used to study at home i used to just copy the books into my notebook aisa mujhe lagta tha ki are yaar cheating matlab you know this is like bahut easy hai yaar ye to copy karna hai ko sochna bhi nahi hai i have to just wahan par jo likha hai i have to write it in my notebook so easy right sochna nahi hai and i did it multiple times the whole physics physics chemistry biology ke both teen teen char char bar maine ek saal mein likh liye pure pure ke pure right can you imagine you can't write you can't even copy without reading can't copy without reading unbeknownst to me i was reading right so it is it is sort of a very interesting way of methodology and even to this day when i read a book or when i write uh, when i uh, when i when i do anything i write and i draw everything that i do so i'll show you the methodology for this that i have developed so eternal struggle in writing is how do you get things in your brain onto paper and 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 that somebody actually understands what you've done right that is the eternal struggle what you write when you write it you think you've written a nice neat clean story like the purple arrow right padhne wala thinks ye ulta seedha likha hai yo the way what you have written versus what other but interprets is totally different right because we all are different people that in my mind there are always low medium high which is th- three um three kinds of writing um some people are very efficient which is in green you have brainstorm you read a little bit you write you edit and you finish that's your very crisp process then there is you read a lot you read continue to read continue to read and then finally you write at the last minute and then get it done this is one way to do it some people may be efficient in this but a lot of people may be in this last phase where you read a lot and you read 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 and you panic you don't know what what you're going to write then you ask for extension and then you keep so the all different ways of of experiencing how we go through writing process so what are the kind of questions we ask ourselves uh, what do we need to start writing one of the questions that one of the questions that you might have asked and what's what are the stages of writing that you have to go through that i will discuss in a little bit and there are some easy parts and there are some hard parts um so what is the process the process of writing actually um is actually not writing writing is not the process of writing believe it or not it is thinking reading and drawing writing is only 25% of the actual writing process if you don't know what you're going to write if you don't think what you're going to write if you haven't read other things that you're going to write about right and if you don't in my mind if you don't like have a visual uh, diagram of what you're going to draw or what you're going to write it's very difficult to write once you know the other three things the writing becomes very easy and i'll show you how so first the thinking part um you know it's it's we think all the time we think all the time but we never write our thoughts down just write your thoughts down no i'm not saying you write a diary or anything you don't have to write a diary bullet points likho just keep writing whatever in your mind because what happens your mind is feeble right it aate hain thoughts chale jate hain aate hain thoughts chale jate hain bhul jate hain bahut achhi idea aati hai bhul jate hain so what we should do is we should constantly think and constantly write down the thoughts at some point those thoughts will those thoughts will come together and, and a story will evolve okay about reading um, about um, i now almost 10 years ago my brother in law um, ajit datar in mumbai who's an avid reader and has hundreds and maybe thousands of books in his house in mumbai uh, we were talking about something and i was telling him how it is challenging for me to read a book etc so he showed me this book which he has the original version um it's written in 1937 by this author mortimer adler it's called how to read a book and in fact it sounds funny kya pad rahe ho how to read a book and people say ye kya padhna hai yaar this is like a such a basic book right but it is a fantastic book if you read this book it will transform the way you read books it is 
one book you want to read. What it tells you is if any book that you read, you have to read it three times. Because what happens is, kitni baar aise hota hai ki, you know, you pick up a book, you read two, three pages and you say, aray yaar, achha nahi likha. Maja nahi aara hai. Story mein maja nahi aara. Or you say, the, you know, the bahut difficult hai. Now, this is not the subject I really wanted to study. So, you know, you, you leave the book after two, three pages, right? Or you just go to the end. Pehle, pehle end, end padh lete hai, ki, you know, this is how it should be. What the book tells you is the author is a, actually a person who's sitting in front of you. He's not physically in front of you, is metaphorically in front of you. And you must first listen to what the author is saying. Jo tumhare samne baitha, usko, jo bol raha, usko suno to si pehli baar, hai na? So first, when you listen to that author, you do not you do not criticize the author, you do not do anything, you do not analyze the author, you don't do anything. Just listen to what the author is saying. The second time you read a book, you analyze. You say, Acha, tumne ye kaha hai. I don't agree with that. You know, you have a conversation with the author, right? And the only time you're allowed to you read the book the third time is if you have read another book or another chapter or any something like this related to the book, which is different from this author. That time you're saying, you're, you're criticizing and you're interpreting the book. You, you're asking questions like, Are, usne to wo kaha tha, yaar. Tum ye kaha rahe ho? Mera ye kaha hai? Then you're having a conversation with the author, right? We all, everything you're doing with yourself only, but I'm saying, the, this is how you read the book three times. Ek hi baar pada nahi jata hai yaar, or teen, teen baar pada ho pahanne ke liye. Right? But it is not literally three times. It is a beautiful process. It's a very beautiful process. What happens is, when you read the book first time, what it tells you is you take notes. You don't read a book without taking a notebook in front of you. You have notes. You mark the book, highlight the book, make question, write on the book, as long as it's not a, as not as long as it is not a library book, if it is a library book, write in your notebook. But if it is your book, no, I'm marking it now. Uh, and when you read the book three times like this, you will never forget the content of the book, because the second time you read a book, it'll take you half the time to read the book because you're not reading the whole book again. You're reading only the highlighted parts. And the third time you read the book, it takes you less than a quarter of the time to read the book. Because you you know so much of the book, you're just focusing on the main parts. And if you and the beauty of this process is that once you get used to reading the book three times like this, actually But once you get used to reading the book three times like this, you actually don't have to read the book three times. In the first time itself, you read the book almost like three times. For example, when you read, you say, Acha, main sun abhi. You are aware that I'm listening to you. And then when you criticize, you say, okay, you know what, this is, I'm criticizing the person. So uh, I know I'm criticizing the person. So I know I'm, this is like my third reading. So in the first reading itself, you do the three things at once. And if you develop this process of reading, reading becomes very easy. There's also, in this book is also another part of how to highlight the book. Remember this book is written in 1937 when there was no other means of entertainment, right? Um, how do you look at this book? How it is highlighted? Kitne side mein pencil se likha gaya hai? Question likhe gaya hai alag alag. Um, asterisks, markings. So when, you, when you pick up this book, even 10 years later, no, you will remember what you read, what, what was there in the book. Or even the paper, like manuscript or whatever you read. You know? So once I started reading this, I was not reading books before. But once I started, after I read this book on how to read a book, right? Um, I read so many books. I read I, I read a book almost, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 books um, a year I read now. And one, one, one you know, not, not a huge amount, but still, and, and I'm not intimidated by reading books. I've started reading more complicated books. I'm reading books on quantum physics. And now I'm understanding them because I'm reading them three times. I don't understand 100% of it, but I still understand quite a bit. The other part, the reason I'm showing this kind of a slide is when you choose to read a book, read books which are related to each other. Just say, for example, on the right side, I was very interested in this book which was written by um, Irving Schrodinger, who's the father of quantum, quantum physics. Um, 
which is called What is Life? I didn't start with this book. I started with a book which is called Edge of Life. It's written by uh, Jim Khalili and John Joe McFadden. And a relative of ours, of mine, a close uh, friend, um, told me, why don't you read this book? You know, because I read this. He's a, he's a physicist and he's an um, aeronautic engineer and all that, right? So he said, I read this very interesting book. Uh, I only understood 50% of the book. Can you read this book for me and we'll discuss it? So uh, I also read the book and uh, with the process that I showed you. And I said, hey, you know what? I also understood only 50% of it. The interesting thing was he understood the 50% of it, which was the quantum physics part of it. And I understood the biology part of it, which was the biology part of it. And the book is about quantum biology. It is about the understanding of, of biological processes through quantum physics. Amazingly fantastic book. Now this book refers to a lot of references of this book comes to uh, from, from this book called What is Life? And then because I'm related, to, I'm reading these books, then I'm, I read these books, which are related to the X and Y chromosome and all the other books on all interrelated to each other, building on a theme that I'm, that I'm reading about. So I'm not reading some random either ka book and udar ka book and either book. They're all interrelated books and my overall knowledge of this field of quantum biology is increasing. And one interesting thing, very interesting point in this, all of these books I have, that I've written, that I've put over here, all refer to this central book. This book is only about 50, 60 pages. It was written by Urban Schrodinger. It's one of the most fascinating books ever if, if in the field of science. So anyway, this is how, I'm not telling you to read this subject. I'm saying how, how through the reading process, I was able to start reading very, very complicated subjects. Now that was reading. Now let's go to drawing. Drawing is a visual representation of ideas. I'm a very visual person. I like to see pictures. And, and so, so when, I, when I read, I doodle, I draw next to me, right? So for example, if I'm reading books and look at this COVID picture, right? Now I just drew social distancing. This is my interpretation of social distancing. And when you're next to each other, the red dots, you will infect the next person. But if you are socially distanced, you will not infect. So it's just a visual, I'm reading something, but I, this is my drawing of that. Right? Suddenly it has a different meaning. Now I'll remember this picture forever. And I might not remember the text of what was written there, but I might remember the picture. Similarly, every paper that I read, I draw. On the right side is the, is the mechanism of action of COVID. I read hundreds of papers on COVID, right? And every time I read a paper on COVID, I add to this picture. This is the virus entering the lungs, causing inflammation, goes to the heart, goes to the brain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm making this beautiful diagram on, on, a, on a chart paper. And I have hundreds of paintings that I have made just in the last two, three months, just to understand how COVID biology works. These memorize into my brain once I know the picture, right? Finally, you get to drawing. So thinking, reading, drawing, and finally you get to drawing. Unless you do all of those things, it's very difficult to write in my mind. When you write, and we are talking about scientific writing today, uh, first start with the key messages. This is such a simple thing, which is some key messages, table of content, write a draft, edit, peer review, finalize. Right? This, any, and this is such a simple thing to do. But it's actually when you start getting to it, it's not that simple. And I'll show you. And we'll maybe do an exercise together on how this works. So one thing to know is that when you write a scientific paper, you should know what the denominator is. So generally, a scientific paper right, is about 4,000 words. That's the size of a paper. How do you divide the 4,000 4, words? The introduction is about 500 words. 500 words is two double space pages. You get about 250, 250 to 300 words is one single page, one, one page. So two pages of that. Methods, another 500 words, depending on how many methods you want to write. Results, 2,000 words or so. Discussion should be discussed properly, so 750 words. Conclusion, 250 words, and your paper is done. So you know exactly how much you have to write. As an ki likhe jara introduction likhe jara pata nahi kab band karna hai. But in that, in that also there is a structure, and I'll we'll show I'll show you that. 
uh, when, once we do the exercise. What do you want to write in the introduction? What did you and the others do and why are you doing it? Method mein, how did you do it? Results mein, what did you find? And discussion mein, what does this all mean? So essentially this is the essence of a scientific paper. So what do I do in terms of writing? I write a little bit every day. Every day I write something or the other, right? I write on different topics. I write a lot, I write a couple of blogs. I write on art, I write on music, I write on awareness, I write on science. I write, I, I have art. So every month for the last 10 years, I have been reviewing one major artist in the world. And uh, I write about that person in, in, in one or two pages, of my own interpretation. Most of it is from Wikipedia and other places, but I write it down for myself, right? Once you write it down, you remember. I write seven accomplishments every week. Every Friday, Saturday, I will write seven things that I did. Handwritten, huh? everything is, I like to handwrite. I write four, one, one a week, I write four handwritten letters even today. For the last 25 years, I've written handwritten letters to people even today. You know that, uh, inland letter envelope aata hai na abhi bhi milta hai 5 rupees ka aata hai sirf you just write on that and you mail it imagine the person who receives that the ecstasy that that person gets of receiving a handwritten letter has been lo has been lost and and so right right not because not because that person makes you happy or anything because you will write your you will improve your scientific writing you know then one final point I want to make in, in handwriting in writing is the feedback. So when you write, it is very important to give feedback. You can even ask your friend who's not even in the scientific field. Um, so I think Kesari, you were saying that you're in the social sciences field, right? Or, or management field. Uh, and, uh, and I would say when you write a paper, na, give it to your engineering person to, to read the book or give it to Saurabh to read the book. On, and so first thing uh, Saurabh may say, Are, mere ko social science and management bare mein kuch aata hai. I'm a biologist, how can I read your book? Uh, how can I read your paper? Everybody can read everybody else's paper, doesn't matter, right? You can at least, you know English, na? So you can at least check the tense, past tense, past tense, future tense, ye mix nahi ho hai. you can check for adjectives. You don't, uh, every time you write an adjective, you don't have to write, it was very nice every time. This was a very important subject. You very every time. If you use very thousand times, then the importance of very goes away. You, know? you have to look at time and space discrepancy. You have to look at you can look at the flow. You can look at repeating words. We don't realize we use the word the very often in our writing. If you're conscious of it, you will not use it the punctuations. Sometimes are useful, sometimes are not. Then you don't then you make sure you don't write long sentences if a sentence is more than one and a half lines it's too long in my mind right one of the very long sentences unless unless you are eb white and you're writing a book called Stuart little you do not write long sentences and i'm going to read this long sentence for you and see how it is right this is a literary sentence so it's just a little bit of a joke but <laughs> but it's a beautiful sentence in the in the loveliest of in the loveliest of towns of all, where the houses were white and high, and the elm trees were green and higher than the houses where the, where the front yards were wide and pleasant, and the backyards were bushy and were worth finding out about, where the streets sloped down to the stream, and the stream flowed quietly under the bridge, where the lawns ended in the orchards and the orchards ended in the fields and the fields ended in the pastures and the pastures climbed the hills and disappeared over the top towards the wonderful white sky in the loveliest of towns Stuart stopped to get a drink of sarcopilia so unless you're Stuart little please do not write long sentences <laughs> and then final statement it is wonderful to take a writing class. You should have a writing class. And, the, and I took one, which was eight weeks. I could not join all the eight weeks, but I, I, it, I did it in Bangalore. It's a beautiful program. And I'm sure there are many other programs like it um, around the world. Uh, um, this was, it's called Bangalore's world famous semi-deluxe writing program. It's a very, very good program. 
and uh, I'll show you what I learned in that in the in the eight weeks. Um, so it tells you that writing is a personal quest. Unless it's a personal quest, it doesn't become serious. It's a it's it's an ability to self-express. You have to look at what the context is. Are you writing contemporary? Are you writing history, urban, rural? This is this, this applies to all kinds of writing, including scientific writing. You have to have your own distinctive style, and that will come only after you write a lot. You have to find yourself. There are many factors that are involved in when you write. Where are you writing? Are you writing in a beautiful space like I am right I'm I'm right now, or are you sitting in a crowded train and writing? Doesn't matter. What motivates you? Find your blind spots. Get feedback. Write for children. Not necessarily children's books or anything. Unless you write to make sure that the child understands, you're not able to write properly. You have to, it has to be, for a child to read, it has to be very simple. You have to remove any sense of detail. It has to be logical and it has to be fact-based. Children love fantastic stories, right? But they're all logical. And of course, you know, I met 24 people and all of these people were very interesting in the class. I met so all of these people. And then I'm not going to read all of these things on, on the right. I read all, they, they, in eight weeks, they make you write all of these genres. You actually write. A lot of writing is done in the eight weeks. And in those eight weeks, they teach you so many things. So I'll end here by saying that we covered, uh, I covered a little bit of uh, the process of writing by looking at thinking, reading, drawing, and writing. I suggest take a class, invite somebody to do a class for you. I can introduce you to those people from that group. Uh, and the more you write, the easier it becomes. So thank you so much. And uh, I'd love to have some discussion on this. So I'll stop sharing. Uh, yeah. so so if you have questions, please uh, uh, ask those questions. So there are a couple of the questions uh, which are in the chat box. So I can I can uh, ask those questions to you, Narayan. Please. Uh, so a couple of uh, people are asking like, what is the so? Everyone is thinking about research, scientific journals, scientific articles. So people are asking like, why? What, what is the what is the best journal? Like if I am writing a paper, uh, where I can find the best journal for my my paper? So that's the biggest question that everyone has. How to how to find out and where where best journal can be. <clears throat> okay, that's a good question, and there's no simple answer for that. I think you'll have to talk to your peers. Uh, I don't know if you were a student or faculty, but if you're a student, then talk to your professors. Your professor most likely will know um, the three or four journals that um, you you can look for. One way to look at it is in Google, we look at something called impact factor. You probably know about this, this topic. Uh, impact factor is, you know, there are two, two schools of thought. One, one school of thought actually is that the higher the impact factor, the better the journal, uh, which for the most part, <laughs> people, that's what people go by. But recently there's been a movement uh, driven by actually a lot of Nobel laureates saying that this impact factor is highly politically and commercially driven. And so it is not, so there are two schools of thought, depending on which school of thought you prefer, uh, you can uh, you can decide. But, but in general, a rule of thumb for your, if you're a student for your uh, education at this point, going with an impact factor at least gives you an idea. Like for example, I'll give you an example, uh, on, on nature or science, which, is a, which are like world famous magazines or, or journals, is, they have an impact factor of let's say, 30 or something, something like that, right? Um, Indian Journal of Medical Research, for example, has an impact factor, I believe, of 1.5, right? So, so that is sort of the scale of, of the impact factors. Now, the impact factor, the role of the impact factor can be, the calculation of the impact factor is done by readership, by referencing the citation index, et cetera, et cetera. But the higher the citation, the higher the reference, um, the impact factor, the more impactful the papers that are there in that. So, so that's one way to look at it. But maybe Saurav or other, other professors can also add how to look for papers. Okay, then uh, Divyanshi was uh, asking like how to improve uh, the habit of reading. Sometimes I feel lazy to do so. So mm -hmm. if you're feeling lazy, how to, how to still improve your 
a habit of writing yeah you know uh, i think um, it is not it is really not it, it generally is never lazy i think people are not lazy just for the sake of being lazy there's always something else that is more important than what what you want to do that's that's in my mind lazy so uh, lazy means ye nahi kar rahe to dusra kuch karna hai din bhar to sote nahi rehte ho na we don't sleep the whole day every day if 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 you're doing that then you're already lazy but but i think you have to figure out what your motivation of writing is and and it won't come overnight thoda sa likhna padega bina likhe to motivation nahi aayega to main kehta hu ki chote chote cheeze likho don't start writing a book on the first day chote chote cheeze likho write a poem most of you many of you may be writing poems um doesn't matter make a scientific poem write a poem on covid covid how covid enters the cell through ace receptors ke upar poem hi likh do na to you know so be creative do things that you um, read or the read a little read a lot i mean read other people's writings that will inspire you to read and read with the with the mind of if this was analyzing acha isne aise likha to main is how can i write like this and anyway, you <laughs> there's no simple answer devanshi uh so uh, a person is asking like how to deal with creative blockage yeah so so you know writers block wagera to hota hai na you know creative blockage to hota hai to to you know i think there is no there is no good way it's always always you have to break the ice in some way form the other so keep so i um the way i kind of write um, is uh, i um i break it up into small manageable parts so i don't write i'm not i i don't like break it up and do something crazy so sora if you don't mind i mean unless there are uh, that i'm sure there are a lot of questions but i i thought we just do an exercise absolutely and write and write a paper together in in, in the next thir- in the next 30 minutes mm-hmm. we'll write a paper right now in 30 minutes hum log paper hi likh denge chalega are you ready absolutely absolutely yeah yeah so um, i have got a template so it's very useful to have a template right um so let's let's go with uh, and i can see some uh, uh faces and not all of you so um, pardon me if i'm just calling out some people uh whoever i see whoever face i say i'm going to just call out and say okay uh, maybe palak palak chauhan i see you right uh, can you just unmute palak uh, yes, just sir. give me a Give me, give me a title on a paper that we're going to write in the next fifteen minutes. कोई भी title दे. Sir, किसकी आप लिखना चाहते हो? Sir, we can uh, write on like the, like the teaching. Uh, we can say uh, we are teachers, we are students, so we can uh, talk on something like how to teach. We can say. अच्छा, very good. I love it. I love yeah, it. Thank you, sir. Okay, so now how to teach is is going to be a we are going to write on this, okay? Yeah. So who who are going to be the authors? Uh, so do I have, do I have to uh, tell names? Just tell me three names. Like we are here. Ha, so. कोई भी दे दो. ऐसे this is an example, हाँ. Like uh, you can say a uh, Kesri man. <laughs> I know okay. her. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Doesn't matter. I I I I I I I I I I I know. I know. I know. I know. Shivam. Uh, I can see. So I can say. <laughs> and then, of course, you will be writing, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm. I'm. I'm just giving you an uh, an idea. So actually, who is first author? Who is second author? Who is third author? These are complicated. It is very politically charged, right? But a bit not. It's a simple thing. But in authorship, a lot of fighting happens in authorship. So don't need to fight. The NIH has a guideline of who is the author and what. what comprises an author that link is in this paper uh, yeah your affiliations who is the corresponding author okay now we, we now we are going to do this exercise collectively there's a there's a there's a thing in the papers that are called keywords hai na yeah so what happens is keywords most of you who have written papers will 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 appreciate what i'm saying ki hum log pura paper likh dete hain uske baad sochte hain are yaar keywords kya hai है ना ऐसे ही लिखते हैं ना हम लोग सब लोग पेपर वो जर्नल ने मांगा है कीवर्ड तो देना पड़ेगा झक मार के देना पड़ेगा कोई भी सोच साच के राइट बाद में नो राइट द कीवर्ड्स राइट नाउ सो पलक एंड शिवम एंड केसरी टेल मी और एनी वन ऑफ यू इन 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 अ पेपर कॉल्ड टीच हाउ टू टीच व्हाट वुड बी योर कीवर्ड्स इन द पेपर 
pedagogy maybe give me we have to give me seven uh online teaching or um, maybe okay anyone else also can give huh sab log ko open hai great teaching aid 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 effective methods interaction स्ट्रक्चर फॉर द पेपर we already have the structure for the paper hai na by just writing the keywords itna powerful like writing the keywords now what are the questions that you want to answer in this paper what are the what are the problems that you are trying to solve how to teach me kya why are you writing this paper so what are the uh, what, are, what are the what are the gaps in the current education or the teaching teaching methodologies yeah what are the gaps today phir integrating teaching with technology how how question question hai how to how to actually uh, integrate te teaching with technology how to make it more interactive excellent how to Two encourage more? collaborative learning actually that was a very good kaun tha wo collaboration ka who was speaking ke me uh uh ke see oh you know okay. see what i i like i like what you said because essentially question kya hai wo jo keywords hai na usi ka question banana hai aur koi question to banane nahi hai exactly to aur kya question ho sakte hain student and teacher interactions so what is the question question mein batana padega how, how, how to make teaching more interactive Oh. How to encourage more positive student-teacher interaction? ठीक है more two more. What are the teaching aids? And one more. How to improve the learning of? Uh, Uh, slow learners or how to how to yeah how to help slow learners uh, using the uh, te teaching methodologies excellent 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 all um, of course you know i'm just showing you a method i'm not showing you the actual writing the paper but now what are the messages you are interested in delivering ye paper likhne ke baad kya messages doge matlab what should people take away from this what would you have taught them like interactive uh, way of teaching is is better in comparison to a traditional uh, classroom black black blackboard and whiteboard teaching mm. interactive not only uh, relation to student teacher interactions but otherwise also like visual uh, aid visual interactions and, and and those kind of interaction collaborative yeah. learning is Oh, certainly better than uh, maybe the individual learning exactly um maybe one more the technology playing an important part in shaping the career of a student the yeah role of technology in teaching And so you can also use graphical images in teaching. Hmm. Use of graphical of graphical images. So again, I'm not showing you. I'm. We are not writing the actual paper, but I'm showing you a process of how to write a paper. Right. See. See. Now you got keywords. You got your key questions. You got your key messages. Right. 
already the writing part becomes simpler, right? Now let's make table of content. Uh, generally, you write the abstract at the end. Okay. Uh, and the abstract will be 250 words. I told you that, right? Introduction me kya likhoge? And who will write the introduction? Let's give Palak the because she came up with the. That's how you pronounce your name, right? A very nice name. You're going to write 500 words. Us introduction me kya likhoge? Teen teen topics batao. So do I have to tell topics or? Ha ha. Like on based on what we just talked about, right? You, okay. Uh, uh, we can uh, talk about. You, Collab I'll give you an, I'll, I'll give you a hint. You have to write what the current state is. Okay, sir. The what is the current state of, of teaching? Teaching. Hey, no? Okay, sir. Current status and... Um... And, and and so what... Are, um, remember I told you in this slide, uh, I'll open that slide. I think it was this. Introduction, hai, what did you do? And... Uh, Little bit yeah. literature. Ah, literature, thoda sa literature aapko thoda, thoda, sa, right? thoda sa, uh, the, the ah. what the people said about this. What? Uh, if people they have raised have... some concern, maybe the challenges. Okay. Yeah, bit. what people have said and what are the challenges. What are the challenges? Yes. Right? And then you end, end the paragraph. Harek ka literally ek ek paragraph hota hai. Right? And okay. in half a page is one paragraph. Two, two paragraphs is one page. Third paragraph is page two, and fourth paragraph is the last part of it. So, four, five paragraph me, apki apka introduction ho gaya, ठीक है? और हर paragraph में चार पांच line है at the most, at the most चार पांच line है. And the last line of that, on the last thing of before at the end of the introduction, you will say, in this paper we will focus on da 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 da. Yes. Introduction ho gaya apka, five hundred word ho gaye, ठीक है? Now the next paper is see this is this is not a paper on this is not a paper on um, uh, you know methods now scientific paper us type ka paper nahi hai it is it is it is more of a paper on um, uh, you know the on how to teach hai na so what will in, in your um, you know the the body of the paper uh, kya kya topics honge? There will be methods. Can method. be, methods can huh? be, methods can be existing a, teaching methods. Existing methods. Existing teaching methodologies. I mean, existing teaching method. Maybe that think, uh, you uh, know uh, online it can be both synchronous, asynchronous. What is the existing straight right. methods? Methods online, uh, and then then you can say future methods. This is where your meat of your paper is now. This is 2,000 words. This is where all your messages are going to come out. All the messages that you have written will come out here. So can we also talk about the limitations of online teaching that people are absolutely, facing as students? Absolutely, absolutely. That will come in the discussion. I'll show you where that comes. You will write the technology. You will write collaboration. You will write interactions. Uh, uh, collaborate advantages as well could be put in here, right? Yeah, advantage. So, 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 so now once you write the body of the text now, and you can write all the topics that you talked on, on the top, then you write, then you have a portion which is sort of called discussion. So, so the body of the text is like your results, methods, and results in your in your regular in the discussion. Now, here you will come with limitation advantages impact what is the impact what is the impact what is, what is how, how do you measure it what are the metrics mm -hmm. of measurement right then and the and and finally you come to conclusion right and recommendations references right then you need tables and figures like I said, drawing is very important. Pictures, maybe photographs of things that you have done. Then, most importantly, my, my goal is to finish the paper in seven weeks. 
ओके सो वी गोइंग टू फिनिश द पेपर इन 7 वीक्स आज क्या आज क्या डेट है टुडे इज सितंबर 8 लिटरली यू राइट सितंबर सितंबर 8 ठीक है सितंबर 8 को आपने मैसेजेस क्वेश्चंस एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा सब बना दिए कीवर्ड्स राइट नाउ सितंबर 15th को you don't you don't start writing yet up to september 15th you read literature theek okay? hai you only read and then you while you are reading gap. identify while you are reading yeah you identify the gaps and you find out you don't write in the first week itself the first week is just read reading. at this time you you draw your pictures you make your figures and tables you collect the data while reading theek hai then uh, september 15 ke baad aayega aapka september 22nd ko you write your first draft and you all of and if, if it's a collaborative co- collaborative paper you don't all of you don't write the f- whole paper introduction someone will write Every, you if you have five authors give each author a section to write and let them focus only on that section you don't have to write the full paper right um then september 29th uh, september 27 and this is first draft then september 29th you have your second draft and you take a good two weeks to write the paper koi jaldi nahi hai and you write, you don't have to write a lot you just write one hour a day till you'll finish the paper theek hai then on october 6th is your uh, um, you know is, is your third draft but this time you have to do cross reading now you read and give feedback to each other just within yourself theek okay? hai and then by october 13th you do peer review meaning you give it to outside people to read somebody else to read right and october 20th you submit so in 7 weeks you have finished the paper it is that easy i'm going to send you this template sort of right so in in this in in 10 minutes we have finished the whole concept of of how to write a paper right and once you start getting into it it will be so easy to write this paper i mean it's so easy now for me in in the last um just 3 months i have written 18 papers i have written uh vac- challenges in vaccine supply critical quali- quality attributes of I- of aggregates i collaborate I, i wrote this is iit delhi drug development biopharma 4.0 i have written on digitization i am writing economics of failure fmef for plasma therapy fmef for vaccines gene therapy review glycan modeling immunovirology um, in silico drug processing machine learning mentoring vaccines for infectious diseases these are the ones i have completed Uh, a space between engineering and biology ethics and quality uh, the lot of i've got lot of rejections lot of rejections uh, collaboration i wrote a um, cycling trip uh, i wrote about my cycling trip to lay uh, pre clinical and biosimilars how to think about risk why do we do clinical trials so many things and i have this folder in which i've got i've have all these manuscripts that are submitted right uh, and i I've, i've also i've got just ideas they are not papers yet this is papers i want to write right art history car t cells classical music dengue emotional intelligence glycan modeling ye sab mujhe paper likhne hain abhi when i have ideas i just put things into this into these papers so this is how i exponentially am able to write so much so there's no question of motivation it is not there's no question of laziness right if you know the process then it becomes very simple 
hopefully this gave you some idea of what i do and maybe you don't have to take exactly what i'm doing and and remember i haven't been doing i this is not coming overnight the process of my writing is because i've been writing for 20 30 years right so once you make it into a habit it becomes very easy anyway so so this is sort of the scope of what what i'm writing about any 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 question so i think you asked your question about um writer's block right mm-hmm. i also get writer's block or i get a lot of writer's block kab band ho jata hai kabhi kabhi and then at, at that point you just give up do something completely different that's why when you draw and you think and you speak and you do all the other things it sort of breaks your writer's block talk to people have conversations good um okay so, so- there is there is also a question like uh, is there any correlation between speaking and writing skills <laughs> I, i believe so i believe so i mean if the, the all of these things are all of these senses are interrelated and and um, you can't do one thing without doing the other thing you, it's it's not like i can't speak unless i write well i can all of these sensations sensibilities increase in parallel you can't be a good writer and then not be a good speaker at some point and and not a good thinker if you write you think right you can't you can't uh, write without thinking um and if you think you surely can write so all yeah. of these things are interrelated they may not be at the same level you might not be uh, as good a speaker as a writer or as good thinker as a, as a speaker etc etc but all of them grow together and they are all highly interrelated mm. uh, so there is also a question like uh, so while writing a paper if you are reading your own paper a couple of times you you may get bored or, or you bit uh, tends to uh, overlook the mistakes which which which, which has happened and which may be critical for the paper uh, so how to how to solve it i think you already said that it is already given to the other people uh, peer review and your fellow colleagues so that they can also improve is there anything else you you like to add no 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 i think i think um, the feedback process is very important and don't you know what don't do feedback because you're going to help that other person when you do feedback learn for yourself are isne aisa likha hai yaar mujhe bhi usse seekhne ko milega kuch yeah in every you be selfish every time if someone gives you a paper to please review this paper aisa mat bolna time nahi hai nikalo time wo padhne ke liye because the fact that the person is someone is giving you the paper to read shows that that person respects your feedback isliye to pucha hai nahi to kyon nahi to kon kyon puchega so i am also uh, means uh, getting it from lot of my friends fellow colleagues like they are getting lot of rejections so they are writing a paper trying to put in best efforts in the paper they are sending it but for number of times the papers are rejected and i also saw people who got uh, disheartened by by couple of rejections so so how to overcome that and that's what uh, someone is asking so how to overcome yeah, that i'll give you a personal example that happened literally happening it's happening right now mera abhi abhi tak publish bhi nahi hua So what happened was I I've been very interested in this COVID um, immunology. So I've been writing a paper. We've written one paper on on um, risk assessment of of um, biotherapeutics, and we published that recently. Uh, and so I think I like the process of how we how we analyze risk. So I said, okay, let me do a risk analysis of plasma therapy. What convalescent plasma therapy is that? In which you give plasma from an infected patient to another person. so we we've, we've done a very detailed analysis of risks of what can be seen in plasma therapy risks so we've written a nice paper on that but i think it's a nice paper we all think it's a nice paper there were 10 of us who wrote the paper together and we've we've submitted to man, many many manuscripts many journals and they all get rejected for one reason or the other um and and um, they get rejected at different levels some some get reviewed and then you know the questions the, uh, the, the responses that we've given are not good enough so they get rejected for the most part many many uh, journals will reject the paper saying that um 
you know, it's not relevant to the journal that they are. You know, so so an, an interesting uh, rejection we got was um, was uh, we submitted to a journal called Drug Safety or something like that. You know, not, may not be exact name of the journal, but um, something like that. And uh, and they said it is not related to our title. I mean, in um, in my opinion, the paper is about drug safety of plasma therapy. It can't be not related. It's the title of your journal. So you, how can it be not related? So you know there are many reasons why people reject. So not necessarily the reason they necessarily give you, but just take rejection with a grain of salt. Uh, I submitted this paper to seven journals. My, I love this number seven. So I submitted to seven journals. Subse rejection I am, and it's a little up. up uh, now there's no point just sending it like that, right? So then I really thought I should have done it way before. The third bar me kar dena chahiye tha, lekin saat bar attempt kar liya. So now what I've done is I've re-looked at the paper, literally asked other people to read the paper. And um, now what we've done is we've got a collaboration with um, another hospital, which is actually doing plasma therapy. And uh, they have now agreed to collaborate with us where we will actually get data from the patients who are doing, uh, who are undergoing plasma therapy. Uh, where we will be able to describe not just the potential risks of plasma therapy, but the actual risks that people have seen in the clinical, in, in, in treatment. Now we'll add that portion more to this paper. And now we'll submit the paper. And hopefully it'll get accepted this time. Let's see. So, you know, when it doesn't work, you have to keep adding. You have to keep adding to the paper. If the paper, if the work is good and you believe in the paper, it will get published. Yeah, yeah. So, so please, if you if you have questions, you can also unmute yourself and ask because I can I can see there are very very long questions in the chat box. It's better if you can ask the question yourself. If you can you can you can pose your own question in a better way. So, if you have a question, please unmute and ask. So, Gurpreet, you can, you can unmute and ask. So, okay, so Dr. Minu wants to ask something, please. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. It's always uh, very good to uh, listen to you and uh, you have been our inspiration because uh, when you have to deal with rejections, I think uh, we have to uh, boost our morale. So my question is, uh, how much important is the cover letter to editor? Good question. Uh, oh, wow. That's a very good question. Um, you know, there are certain journals which require cover letters and certain journals which don't require cover journals. So, you know, nowadays there is this online submission and cover journal ko ek form, form hota hai. You just fill the form and then you fill it. You know, it is, it is very personal because some editors like to see a cover letter which is very, you know, impactful. Other, other journals don't care. So, there is no, there is no black and white answer. I would say if you're going to write a cover letter, don't write it for the sake of writing it. If you're going to write a cover letter, say something meaningful and impactful in it. Just don't say Ki, here is a paper, here is a paper that is entitled so and so by these these authors. Uh, we would be obliged, or we 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 thank you for reviewing it. Ye aisa cover letter ki, agar, if you're going to write a cover letter like this, I said don't bother. If you're going to write a cover letter, usme kuch man laga ke likho. Ki humne ye ye, we, we've really found this and we found this is why it is important. Tell the impact of that into the cover letter. Now, whether the cover letter will be read by the editor or not, you have no idea. Lekin agar likh rahe ho, to achha likho. Agar sida sada likh rahe ho, to likhne ki zarurat nahi hai. That would be my answer. So, so right now, what is also oh, happening is, uh, at times, I have also experienced it. Uh, like a lot of editors, I don't, I don't know whether they, they may not have much time to look at the manuscript that comes to their desk. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, manuscript takes a long, long time at the editor desk and then relatively long time uh, for review. And I think if anything is taking more than six months time, the data is going to be redundant and may not be of, of, of scientific use. So yeah. what's your say into it? And not only me, I think everyone is... Everyone is uh, facing this kind of problem where editor is taking too long time for a for a journal to look at and then review uh, review time is also from three to six months or even more at times yeah i i think if, if in rule of thumb i think if it takes more than three weeks after you submitted the paper you should be bold enough to say 
I'm going to retract the paper from you. Yeah. Three weeks is a good enough time for a reviewer to, you know, actually it's only two weeks, but um, one week for the editor to sort of figure out who, who the editor but, is going uh, to uh, Narin, to. I'm so sorry to differ here. You know, the, uh, the, this is what my, exactly my question was that this is not at all with us, you know, uh, writing the reminders also. And uh, in spite of that, you know, at, at least, at least uh, the paper which I have uh, recently got published is after one and a half year. And they, that, wow. and, and let me tell you that there no. is just a, a review article, review article, not not much um, of the you know new finding or uh, or anything, but uh, in so many reminders. And after one year, full one year, I got the revision, and then um, I I don't know that that's what my question was. Does it happen only in social sciences, or does it happen in uh, all other sciences as well? And this is my practical experience. I'm sharing my own experience, not of course, uh, not of, of someone else. Of course, no, no. So, so that's that's very interesting. I've never, I've published a lot, and I've never seen this kind of delay. I mean, at the most, um, I would say a month, maybe, maybe a push comes to shove too. But that, that, that also not on the first review. Like, in principle, whenever I have submitted a paper to any journal, within a month, I'm getting a response. I mean, I, I, I don't know how, I don't know if it's a generalization of our scientific of, of the biological sciences versus social sciences i i i've not published much you mean, in you mean, social you sciences so i don't know also, but but i i withdraw the paper once it is not being uh, uh, gone beyond the editor's desk so i i ask the uh, journals to to withdraw my paper and then i send it to some 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 other place so it happens no. it happens with me also so i, I tend to withdraw it and then send it to someone else yeah, because like Saurabh said, um, if you wait for too long, the story will be old. Yeah, that's true. Um, so anyway, so Casey, I, I, I don't know the answer to your question, and I'm, I'm curious to know whether it is, it is different. Seriously, at, at, at times the researcher himself or herself forgets that ki what, what was, uh, you know, it all about. <laughs> And that is a very interesting uh, observation. I, I don't know if it's a generalized thing or whether it is. I know, for example, uh, book publish, karna, though, it takes a lot of time. If you're, if you're publishing a book, it takes a long time. But for manuscripts, I think I think one or two months should be should be good. And by, see, it's a different thing from whether you mean one year to get it published matlab, in print. Kya? Uh, it was because online it might, it, both. It might take a year, it might take six months to a year for it to get printed, but, no, but, but the, after one, months, one year, the, the first revision, the comments are, uh, were received after one year. That is too long. That that seems too long to me. But anyway, I, 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 it's difficult for me to comment because I don't know the other field. But in principle, it should not take that long in, in my mind. It might be an outlier. I don't know. How, what do your colleagues say in your field? <laughs> The same same opinion that in social science it takes more than one year. No, we have. I, I, I spoke to some of my colleagues here in you know the other universities also, uh, from social sciences, and they also had the same opinion. I, I don't know. Now we have started looking at the response time of the journals also before submitting. So the journals who are responding in three to four weeks. Now we prefer to submit in those journals rather than the others who takes uh, quite a long time. Yes, of course, that, that you know, now we have to be very careful. And as an example that you write, uh, Dr. Saurav, uh, the LJV house, there are a few uh, uh, the journals. They will uh, give you the quick uh, reply maybe in two weeks. And whether it, and after that, you know, before one month, even if it is a straight way rejection, they will let you know. So any, any other yeah. question, please, you can unmute and ask. So I can see in chat, there are a few questions. So, so Gurpreet, are you here? If you if you want to unmute yourself and ask. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, so, can, so, so you are not audible. I'm not audible? Yes, yes, now it is okay. Okay, uh, so, so my question is, uh, there are a lot of literature available online about any topic. Say I'm writing in, say I'm writing for therapeutics in oncology. I read a lot of papers. I've read a lot of books. Uh, but since I'm an amateur I've, and I've just started to write, I've just started to read as well. Um, there are times where I feel that I want to include everything that I've read. Say I've read like five to six books. I want to include everything. But then um, I cannot 
uh, retract relevant information that I should put in my paper. So that this is where I struggle a lot. I um, we had to make a PPT on your research topic, where I need, where I want to research further. So just just to find a perfect question, I had to read so much, but I couldn't really make a sense out of it. So um, could you please suggest me something that I can? Hmm. about this so so i mean do you mind sharing the topic on which you're writing i was writing uh, i was writing for oncology so i even i was in very sure of where do i want to research so i thought okay let me just go for therapeutics and uh, this is where this is what i did um, i read a lot of papers on herbal therapeutics on chemotherapy and everything that is applied generally applied for as yeah. therapy for oncology uh, for cancer patients this is what i read but i couldn't really make a perfect sense of how to state a question where do i really want to st- where do i really want to work so everything that i read was so inspirational and so novel to me and so good that i wanted to include everything and then try to make yeah. a sense out of it just to so, probably write yeah it. so you know so so use um, I, i would suggest use the process that i showed you which is you know go with the keywords go with the questions go with the messages that you want and and then once you make those questions then you sort of prioritize prioritize which ones you feel give them scores prioritize in your mind which one is more important than the other then that will maybe help you um decide which one and and for sure don't write everything that you know right that, that you can write 10 papers in one paper just focus on two three messages at the most okay. right that will help you go, that will help you understand so um i, I mean I, i don't know if you want to go through this exercise quickly but if you, if you, let's say you start with you want to write something in oncology and let's say herbal and chemotherapy right just choose herbal or chemotherapy don't choose both herbal maybe there is so many and there are so many types of cancers right don't you don't have to write on all cancers right just write on brain tumor that's it you can write one paper on brain tumor second paper on liver third paper on this sub paper sub ek mein dikhne ki zarurat nahi hai just focus on one and since you're you're still you you said yourself you're you're an amateur in your son writing uh, learning to write you don't have to write a textbook in your first attempt chhota paper likho pehle right जिम जाते हो जब यू डोंट गो एंड पिकअप टू हंड्रेड किलोग्राम ऑन द फर्स्ट डे ना पहले पांच किलो पहले उठाओ एंड देन यू कैन पिकअप फाइव टू हंड्रेड किलोज सो दिस इज दिस इज आई गेव दिस अनालॉजी सेम थिंग राइट सिंपल राइट 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 फॉर चिल्ड्रेन फर्स्ट इट एक्चुअली वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू राइट फॉर चिल्ड्रेन इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट जानवर ऑफ राइटिंग what i learned in in uh, that writing workshop that i did okay thank you sir okay so can poor vocabulary also uh, was on the the result of a of a uh, paper <laughs> yeah i think vocabulary is important but you don't want uh, shashi tharur vocabulary either right to wo samajh bhi nahi aata ko kya lik Uh, but but i think you know there has to be a good balance of 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 it has to be it has it has to be interesting for the reader agar reader if reader then find a story to kya padhenge yaar tum you you will not read a paper which is doesn't have a flow doesn't have a story why would you also write like that there is also so a question it, what to what to include or exclude while communicating science to general public it is very difficult it is very difficult so you know go minimalistic first go minimalistic first ek complicated story banane ki zarurat nahi hai pehle simple story batao and then you can layer on uh, you know complexities later on pehle once people start understanding the first part see today in, in today's day and age um, with with the pandemic science is become ubiquitous right tumhara paan wala also knows that um, कोविड टू इन्फेक्ट एस टू रिसेप्टर वो वो भी बता देगा आपको 
you know, in this area, the science has really taken off. So it's a great time to be in, in the field of science these days. But um, to articulate the complexity of COVID is not easy, right? And, uh, and now so many people are able to do it. So Hasiba was asking, what is the best way of teaching? <laughs> that is <laughs> sort of you guys should tell. <laughs> no, no, you, I, I think uh, your lectures are amazing. Like, uh, and, and we also tend to learn from your lectures as to how to teach. And so, so I think you, you are the best person to, to, to answer this question. <laughs> You know, I've also learned from uh, observing uh, everyone also, and um, there is a there is a session that I've done uh, with Shulini and others on that awareness thing on how to speak. Um, so I, I do this session on uh, you know, speaking clearly and softly and and you know in accordance to who your audience is. Um, you know, so you have to be aware of who your audience is and speak to the audience. Um, and, and, you know, simple is always better. Simple is always better. May, and the simpler you can tell the story. When you're in a scientific field, you feel like, um, like if you're immunology, then there's this whole process of antigen presentation. It is a complicated field, right? The question is, how do you make it simple? There is a way to make it simple. It, and And... Like I said, if you draw the picture, if you if if you you know doodle and make cartoons, make videos, um, then the process you know multimedia use use like you see you use technology right you use different things different things and and through through the through practice only it comes. Yeah. So I think uh, so so I think I have asked most of the questions. Uh, so I so there is one request from my side to you. So you talked about that writing uh, session you attended uh, yes. in Bangalore, which helps you a lot in, in improve the writing. So if you could introduce us uh, to those people so that we can also organize uh, some sort of writing sessions here in our campus and we and all the students can also benefit it, that would be good. So please, please introduce uh, them to us also so that we can also uh, yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm sharing my sl slide deck on that, um, on that program. You can just Google this program. I'll, I'll obviously introduce you to them by email also. But this, if you Google this, um, yes. they, I, I think they do it every year. I don't know how they're going to do it on COVID times, but they must, there must be an online process that they might be doing it. But this is the pro, this is what the program is called, yes. Bangalore's yes. world famous semi deluxe writing program, and there's a story for it. Mm -hmm. why this title so anyway mm -hmm. the, the, this is it's you can google it yeah sure so i'll google it and yeah. try to find out yeah yeah, yeah. i re highly recommend um do you know you're in in shulini you have an opportunity to um, you know give a course on uh, a small course you know maybe half a credit one credit whatever that uh, lim minimum thing is uh, on, on scientific writing it's worth yeah. it so, so we have included uh, writing seminars as part of the curriculum but uh, yeah, so scientific writing itself is a, is a, is, a, is is important as a different kind of art. So we may need to include this this program as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if there are no more questions, so uh, first of all, I would like to thank Nareen for uh, taking out time and for this uh, exciting presentation. And uh, he has addressed almost all the questions. So so thank you, Nareen, uh, for accepting our request and, and uh, for this lecture. We may bother you in future also for this topic or, or some other topic of, of, of relevance. Uh, so thank you. And I would also like to thank all the faculty members, all the uh, students who have joined uh, today's session. I'm pretty sure that you all, all must be benefited out of uh, this session. We'll be having more sessions of this sort uh, in future. Uh, so, so let's improve our own writing skills and let's uh, conquer the world of uh, publishing so that we can also write the quality research papers and can also publish. So as Naren said, rejections is part of, uh, part of the publication process. Please don't, don't get disheartened out of that. It is a way to improve it further uh, and, and to submit it in, 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 a, in a much uh, better journal. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you, Naren, and thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye-bye.